you've already purchased all the supplies, been enlightened on many of the uber cool techniques and tips that Kay shared on grooming your hairless Chinese crested, and this, the final episode, she's going to share how to groom a powder puff. Meet nine-month-old Captain. Yep, a Chinese crested with hair. He's kind of like a golden. By the time you think you're done drying, you found another wet spot. Yeah. 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 Finally made it to episode three in our How to Show Groom Your Chinese Crested. You'll have to hold out and see what our next breed is, but until then, be sure to like, comment below, subscribe, and of course, ring that little bell so you don't miss one episode. You guessed it. Just like in the previous episodes, K starts with the bath. With Puff Crested, she uses a variety of products, all depending on the coat of the dog, of course. In Captain's case, it's a Teresa May. His coat is really nice. It lays pretty flat to start, and he doesn't really mat. This is a double-coated breed. Generally, the undercoat is shorter than the top coat, allowing for the guard hairs to lay over the top. But the guard hairs should lay like a veil over the top, which is why they should have kind of a lay-flat look, but okay. it shouldn't be a thick, heavy coat like a Shih Tzu or a loss. Okay, right. First product that she uses is Saving Grace, and she puts it on the feet of the puffs because, of course, it takes care of the stains. Watch episode two and you'll understand what I'm talking about. She puts it on first, allowing it to sit the suggested five to ten minutes to work in the stain while she moves on to the shampooing and cleaning of the rest of the body. You mentioned in episode one, she has discovered that putting on the conditioner first before the shampoo really helps make the coat really beautiful. Also, she uses human hair shampoo and conditioner combinations that are designed to smooth hair. Look for the phrase smooth and silky and you're good to go. So what I do is I use the conditioner first. Uh-huh and put it all over them, just like you were washing them with shampoo. Right, okay. Working into the coat. And then once I have them full of conditioner, I add the shampoo. Yeah. Okay, so you don't even rinse it off. Nice, okay. Say it's a step. Yep. I do try and use, like, if I'm using Tresemme, I use both Tresemme products, not one Pantene, one Tresemme. Right. Or if I'm using, um, Artero, I you try and use both Artero, both Artero products. Artero. They seem to work better together. Sometimes you're just not sure what's going to work well right. together. And it's just a matter of working your hands working through the coat. coat. Yep. Rather than just right, you like want to get coat, it. his coat. You could actually just kind of rub him back and forth, but it just seems to work everything through the coat better if you run your fingers through it. Very important to make sure on the puffs that you get their anal, anal area, area clear, yes. as well as where their pee pee can get all over their yep. bellies. And after that, rinse them off. And when I say rinse them off, I mean rinse them off good, because you don't want any of that product being left in that beautiful coat. Shampoo left in the coat can attract more dirt, and that kind of defeats the purpose, right? Of course, if you've been playing along, you know what's next. Dremel time, peeps. But listen to the amazing tip from Kay. So we use a Dremel. Yep. And we do it when the feet are wet. Oh, okay. It's much easier not to catch hair if you do them when oh, their feet are wet. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Just rounds off the tips of the nails with a Dremel. You can tell her dogs have definitely been socialized with the Dremel. No need to do the burrito technique here. From there, it's time to do a quick little towel dry and then use the force dryer to get the water off. And she starts at the feet. And then I will just like lightly from a distance blow through the coat this way. You can see he's got just a little bit of rubbing underneath. Yeah. Because he's nine months old and it will change. Okay. And it will brush right out. The advantage of the force dryer as well is that you can uh, see their skin. Yeah, yeah. So it's easier to make sure you don't have anything that you miss or a bug or yep. whatever. Yep. So, do you remember that swishy coat blow dry cream combo she talked about in previous episodes? Yeah, well, now it's time to pull it out. I, I, I like the swishy coat because it really helps with their coat and I okay. put it on before I dry them. Okay. After your dog's been sprayed down, now you can pull out that variable speed dryer and really dry the coat. Now you don't want it on a super high heat, you want to use medium because high heat will break the coat. So, and I just start underneath. This brush is an Artero brush. Right. This is supposed to be a soft side and this is supposed to be a harder side. Right. I tend to use mostly the black side just because I like it better. Okay. But you can use, a what? lot depends on how you use it. The main idea here is that you want to use the brush the way the pins go. The pins come out and go down, so the brush should always be used towards its handle. 
Okay. Should they ever be used sideways? Like sideways. This? It because should be going. Okay. Should always go towards, towards the, the handle. handle. And it should never be forced. It should only be two fingers worth of pressure all the way through. Because all you're trying to do is separate the separate hair. Separate the hair to dry. Mm -hmm. So whether you're drying this way or this way or this way, that brush should always go towards, towards. the hand. Okay. And this is where it comes in since none of them like their feet dried. Right. That you've already pre-dried pre most of their feet. Even when you come to a mat, which is not really a mat, it's just right. more of a tangle here, you can just pull it apart a little bit. Okay. Brush through it. And because he is changing coat and not a matted dog, that little bit comes That's out. it. I mean, do they get matted? They can. Okay. And some of them, if they have incorrect coat, they can mat rather severely. Okay. Or if they're like left out in the rain and then not dried, they right. can, they can mat. Side note here. Kay trains all of her dogs to lay on their side while they're being dried. I would definitely recommend it because it makes things so much easier. So word from the wise, start when they are young. Now it's very important on puffs to do the armpits because of course that's where it gets all matted, nasty, and icky, so brush it out really well. How you dry a puff actually really depends on the type of coat the dog has. Now, in Captain's case, he has a really nice coat. And because he's so young, you could probably just let him air dry and brush him out. But generally speaking, powder puff should be dried and not left to air dry on its own. The issue with this breed is coat is tough. Okay. Um, you don't want them to look like a Shih Tzu, but you don't want them to look like a Yorkie. Okay, right, okay. So right. You, you're, you're, a puff does not mean that they should puff out like Avenese. Right. That they should be double-coated. They're double-coated. Okay. So you don't want something that's totally single-coated, which this one obviously isn't as we're brushing out his undercoat, but he doesn't have a lot of undercoat. It does make for beautiful hair. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, you can see it. I mean, this is just washed and dried with the conditioner beforehand. Right. You see how beautiful it is. Yeah, I mean, seriously, this is, like, amazing. And while you're drying, you should also pull out that comb because this is where you're going to need it. And then while you're brushing, you always just want to, when you get a spot done while you're drying, uh -huh. you just want to check it with a comb. Make sure that you don't have anything that's, Any, yeah. that you missed. She also goes over the dog one last time with the comb at the very end when she's done drying them, just to make sure all of the knots are out. I'm sure at this point of the episode, you can see just how important it is to teach your dog to lay on its side while it's being dried. She can easily get to the side and underneath from this position. Now, once the one side is done, it's time to flip them over and do the other side. And a good puff coat, other than when it's going through coat change, should not tend to knot so much. They always, like any other long-coated breed, will mat in their armpits. Uh, okay, all right, so that's why we're going through it. Okay. Worst spot. Worst spot, pools, everybody, armpits. Armpits. Because they have hair there. Right, and they're around. running around, and, and they're, it just does right, like this. right. And it just mats, yeah. I don't have that in my breed. I have it in um, ear, ear fringe. Yep, the backs of your ears. Yep, yep. For me, when they're laying down, it's too hard to do the entire chest. Yeah. So I do the top part of it. This is already done. Right. And so I do the top part of it with them sitting up. She said it before and she'll say it again. You never shave a dirty dog. So even though there's not a lot to shave, the face and those ears need to be clean and dry. Now, for this next part, I'm telling you, you're going to want to take notes. There is a lot of information she's going to share and it will for ever change how you groom not only your powder puff but your trimmer skill set as well. I have a trick that I use. Now everybody's going to know what it is. My dogs do not like to wear bands. Uh -huh. So to make it where they do not have to wear bands, when we bathe them, we take the very front of their little top knots and we pluck out some of the longer hairs. And then as it grows in, it falls where it should, and they don't have to wear bands because they're always tearing them out anyway, and they can still see. For everyone yeah. that said I wouldn't give up my secrets. <laughs> she just gave up like a major secret. Chinese Cresteds say the face and ears may be shaved. Everybody's definition of face and ears is different. How much you shave on the ears, how much you shave on the face, where you go to, and how you shave down the neck. There are breeders who do not shave the neck and they only shave the face. That's fine. There are some people that shave the neck all the way down to the breastbone. Everybody's personal preference, it does not state 
where to shave to in our breed standard. My personal preference, the length of the dog's muzzle from here to here is the length I generally go down because to me, it's a very balanced look. Another trade secret, thank you very much. <laughs> you're shaving all the way down with a it says it's a 30 blade this is a very difficult area to get i find if you pull it with your thumb oh. then you can shave it clean sometimes you have a seam here as well so you just use your thumb and your fingers when you're shaving faces to move the skin if you were to just go across here you end up with all this left right so if you pull it down you can shave it and have nothing left. And you get a clean line. Yep. The other issue is how far back you shave your dog. You can shave anywhere from the corner of the eye all the way back to the ear. A lot on the dogs that I shave depends on their head shape. If they have a very clean head, I will go a little bit further back. Like this dog, I go back to his cheek uh -huh. because they're not supposed to be cheeky and he is not. I tend to stay to the top, to the bottom corner of the eye, so if you hold the skin this way, it's easier, and you can make your line to go wherever you want it to go. Like here, obviously he's been shaved further back, right? but if I decide I want to grow that in, then I can just leave it here and it'll grow back in to go with the rest of it. But you want a pleasing line, whether you shave on the other side, I'll shave closer up, and show the same thing. Same thing, okay. And when you shave around their eye to not damage their eye, if you do the same thing, pull their eye open, mm -hmm. and when you use your clipper, aim it up so you do not shave the hair above, and you also have no issue of going into the eye. So you wanna hold the eye open, open. and then tip up like this. Just stretch out skin where you need to to make sure that you get it shaved. Now we also, on this breed, tend to leave a reverse V here. Okay. I find if their eyes run, I don't tend to leave quite as much. Even if it's a black dog, if his eyes are running, I'm going to take a little bit more hair off. But you can shape it this way. And then you can decide how far that V is going to go. Okay. That's all right. I'm going to And there again, the breed standard calls for moderate stop. If they have too much stop, you want to leave a little bit more V. If you just like the look, you can leave a little bit more. If you don't like the look, you can take a little more off. My dogs that are not showing anymore, I tend to do a reverse V, just like we do the poodles. So that would give you your basic look into the top one. When you do the front here, providing that they're somewhat easy to clip. The main thing when you're clipping their faces, if you don't dig with the clipper uh -huh. like this, then you don't have an issue. The blade is meant to be used flat. That's how it's made. Use the blade flat. So when you put it down, the blade should go against the dog. It should not be used like this to scrape. It should be go against the dog. Take less off of their face. You could go to the corner of the eye and just down past the corner of the mouth. Mm -hmm. And then you would just blend your line in here. See how it gives a total mm -hmm. different look to yep. the face yep. than this sure gives. Does. Yeah. I think on him, this is a much softer look right. than this is. He looks a little bit like a gremlin, if I leave him here. <laughs> Captain, are you a gremlin? No. So, therefore, I take his face back a little, further, a little further because further. I yeah. think it's pleasing on him. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. But a much prettier oh, look yeah. that way than if you leave the hair on his face mm -hmm. further forward. I always start out with them further forward and then I work back work depending back. on what I like and don't like on what you see. Very important <clears throat> to make sure that you comb out anything that's here, otherwise you will end up with mats from your shaved hair. Again, personal preference, 
Ears can be done just the tip or anywhere all the way down to the base. Okay. You can leave hair on, on the ears, on a puff or a hairless. Almost nobody leaves hair in the United States on puff ears. But in Europe, it's very common to leave hair and have a full fringe. If you're going to do, when they're young especially, if they're having trouble getting the ears up, I tend to go all the way to the base of the ear, which would be, you could feel it here. Okay, okay. And so then I'll just go to where the cartilage is a bump. Doing ears is a little tricky because if you catch the edge wrong, I don't care what blade you're using, they're going to bleed. Yeah. And they bleed for a long time. So this is very thin skin right here. You want to make sure you keep your finger underneath it and go the way the hair grows. You've got a flap here. You do the same thing. Keep your finger underneath it when you go along. Okay, now everyone's going to say, but you're using the edge. Difference from shaving the face to shaving the ears, you can use the edge when you come over here instead of leaving the clipper straight because if you use an edge and take it up against your finger, yeah. you do not have to scissor it. And you do not risk cutting the dog's ear. And you have a clean line. Yes, you do. Look at that. So this again, this is where you have little soft pieces of ear. Mm -hmm. You want to be very careful here because you can, and I have, cut them. Cut them. So when you do it this way, then to do the inside of the ear, Pressure, yep. pressure the ear and flip it and do basically the same thing. Being very careful in this area because if you shave it, you can see those tiny flaps. Mm -hmm. And we have all that do this breed been known to cut them on occasion. You try and do that. You know, one time is usually enough and you're paranoid. Yeah. So and then you go back the same way from the underneath. Yep. And you do the same thing and you have a clean scissored line. If you're going to go to sleep, put your head that way. Thanks. <laughs> the one thing you do not want to do is do this anywhere along the line with your blade on your ear because you will slice your slice. ear. Yeah. So when you're done, you have a very clean ear. You don't have to scissor it. Nice. And you can, if you want, you can take, depending on your dog's ear, ear strength, ear hair, and what you like, you can do just a half of an ear. Oh, okay. You do not have to do, do the, whole thing. Okay. the entire ear. If your dog uses its ears and you like all the hair, right. you can you leave can hair leave it. okay. on its ears. And even if you leave a fringe, you can shave the tip. And then the base of the ear is still coated. Yeah, yeah. And the tip is done. And it's still a pretty look still, either yeah, way. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Either way. Yeah, I like it. From the face, she moves on to the feet. Just like the rest of the breed exhibitors and owners will tell you, get those hairs off the pads because they hold moisture, people. And of course, all that extra hair makes the pad slippery. She also trims right around the edge of the pads to give that nice clean look when you go to trim your feet with the thinning shears. Breed is a, is a hair foot, okay? Right. And I do not prefer to have them looking unfinished, but I also don't want them to look like a Cocker Spaniel foot. And I use my hand down the leg like it's a column. Mm -hmm. And then whatever hangs over, I will tend to just clean around the edges. Just clean the edges. Yeah. You don't want it to be a cocker foot, but you don't need it to be disgusting and dirty and nasty. Right. So you can just neaten it up and you can start little and you can go bigger if you want. Your next step is to take care of those, you know, private parts. Yep. Trim around the anal opening and then a sanitary trim underneath for all of the dangly bits and pieces. Because that way, if they happen to have an accident, you will not have it all over your hair. There you and go. it just makes for a nice, yeah, clean look. look. Yep. And a lot easier to keep a dog clean if you trim them that way. Final step would be to iron the coat. Now, you would iron the coat for one of two reasons. Normally, with a maintenance bath, it's not iron, but obviously for a show groom, it would be a perfect special touch, but you can also use it to help train the coat. Now, as a human, I straighten my hair. Right. Do you put anything in it to protect yes. the hair? Okay. We use the same thing. We use the swishy coat. Swishy coat. Okay. And so we just mist over it. Now, if you don't need to iron the entire coat, you just want to do the top part where you've got a little bit of a wrinkle, you can use your comb, pull it out slide the iron underneath and then when I iron it I 
pull the hair flat like this. Yep. Okay. The plethora of techniques and tips that Kay shared do not end with trimming. Wait until you hear what she has to share about using a flat iron. Get out your paper and pen, peeps. And you want to make sure that you don't burn the dog. Right. So you don't want to put it up against the skin. So I always just use a comb to lift the hair. If he was a heavy coated dog, then I would have him laying down and I would start from the base and go up. And when you look at the difference that this oh, looks yeah. like as opposed to what this looks like over here. Yep, a huge difference. It's just a Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, well, it's a huge difference, but it's also a slight difference. It's Meaning, a beautiful finish. It's a beautiful, beautiful finish, absolutely. And the idea is you don't want to burn the dog and you don't want to burn the hair. Move quick. And you basically take it out. Do you use like a ceramic? Yes. And I prefer an iron that does not go all the way to the edge because you have less chance of burning them even though it's still hot. And if you're going to iron their head, what you can do, I tend to iron through the middle. You have less chance of scorching in the ear. Okay. On him, you can see that everything is here. And being a young dog and his coat's just coming in, you should be able to see through a puff coat. Okay. I mean, not to the skin. Right. But you can you see, see it's a veil. It's supposed right. to be a veil. Okay. So you should be able to see through the edges. Okay. It shouldn't necessarily be a solid coat all the way down. But if you look at this side, it's just a finished look up here. We haven't ironed this. And if you look at this side. Oh, yeah. Just right here in the chest area. I never iron a dry coat. Right. But the difference in the finish. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah. It's, it's like that special paint. little extra touch. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Kay shared so much information. I kind of wish there was another variety to make another episode. Now, while everything she shared was performed on a Chinese crested, so many of the techniques could be used on any breed. That's what I love about this series. And, of course, being able to share it with you all. So, Kay, thank you so much for sharing your time and talents. I will be forever grateful. So all of you out there, tell me, how many of you now want to get your hands on your own crested? Tell me they are not just the coolest breed ever, right? Until next time. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good boy. Good boy. Seriously, that was my boobs. He's like, my shadow. Yeah, like, <laughs>